you've been working on Linux for any amount of time, at some point, hopefully, you have asked yourself, how does my shell bash, when I type sudo echo something, how does it know where sudo is? How does it know where to find that binary or script that it's going to run as a result of me typing in that command? So by this point in your Linux career, I'm sure you're familiar with the which command, which. So if I say which sudo, it's going to give me user bin sudo. That's where it found the sudo binary that it's going to run. But how did it actually find that? Well, it's set in my path variable. It's a variable like any other in bash. Uh, you can echo it out and see what it is. You can see that it's a colon separated listing of directories. These are the directories and in this order Bash is going to go through and check each one to see if this has a sudo inside. So first it's going to check user local sbin, then user local bin, then user sbin, then user bin, then root bin. Does that make sense? So the first place where something named whatever you're trying to run, in this case sudo, is, that's going to return that binary or script, doesn't matter, it's just any executable file that is a file with the execute bit set, it's going to return that and execute it. Make sense? This is your dictionary, this is sort of where you look up, where do I find these things? Let's walk through that one more time quickly. So when I say sudo echo hello, what this is going to do is, as soon as I hit enter, Bash is going to basically look at path, and then it's going to list this first one, see if the file's in there, anything by the name of sudo, then it's going to check this one, do the same thing, then this one, and the first one that returns something, that's where it stops. So if user local bin says, oh, I've got a sudo, then we're done. We're not going to check the rest of these. You can use the which command to figure out where that actually ends up being. So user bin is the thing that actually ends up matching. It's the one before the last, the penultimate listing here in uh, path. And that brings up a, an interesting way to be evil. So I'm sure you've heard in all of your bash scripts, you should always put the full path to the binary or file you're trying to call or include or work with. Why is that? Well, it's because of how this path variable works and how bash treats it. So in a script, you would write, you know, if you wanted to do sudo something, you would say user bin sudo something and not just sudo some command. The reason is what I've got here is an evil sudo command. Now by itself, if I just say sudo, as you saw before, nothing really happens. This isn't terrible. It is an executable file. And when I run it, it is a script and I'm running it as root. So this is kind of an issue. But by itself, it's not doing any damage. However, I'm going to show you how to edit the path variable, and then you'll see how this becomes a problem. So just for reference, let's put our path here, give us some space, and then we can start thinking about whether we want to prepend or append to path. So if you want to append something to path, you do it like any other bash variable. You say path equals, and let's say we're appending, you'll say path, and then add a colon, and then you just add some directory to append to that. So if I hit enter now, I'm not going to do that, but this is how you would append to path. So it's adding something at the end. This is generally what you want to do, um, unless you want to override sort of the most important directories that get searched first. So if you want your directory that you're adding to get searched before like system binaries, user local, binaries, user binaries, or anything else, you would prepend. So instead of doing this, okay, it's the path plus another colon plus another little listing here for a location, what you would say is path equals your directory. So in this case, I'm in root, not rot, but root, colon. So what this is going to do is put root at the very beginning of our path here. So it's going to get searched before even user local sbin. So if I'm a bad guy, and I do this, now anything I put into root is going to get found first. So now when I say which sudo, it's going to find root sudo, and let's see what that means. So now when I say sudo echo hello world, 
Oh, how happy and carefree I am. Something terrible happens. Bash finds sudo in the very first bit of the path that it searches, which is slash root. It's the directory I'm in. And that happens to be a horrifically evil shell script, which harmlessly echoes something out. Ten points if you can guess the video game that this is from. You really don't want this to happen to you, especially when you're executing things as root, like in a cron tab or in a bash script that's going to be run by a super user. So this is why you need to put absolute paths to binaries and scripts that you're working with in your sort of day-to-day -day scripting. Okay, because obviously in real life it's not, you spill my drink, it's uh, I remove all of your files. I'm sorry for the terrible Russian accent, but that, that's what it is. So there you go. Prepending, appending, why you want to use absolute paths. And finally, I just want to show you very quickly the places where this gets sort of munged and set for each new uh, bash session that gets opened up. It's like when I log in here, so when I log out, this is going to go back to being the path it was before because I'm not exporting the path. I'm not actually hard coding this anywhere. The place you would hard code something like this is in a user's bash profile. So if I take a quick look at the bash profile here, I can see that something does get added here. And this is where if you just wanted to edit root's path so that every time root opens a new bash session, you can see that home bin is added so that every time root opens a new bash session, this path variable will include what it was originally set plus this colon separator and then our home directory, so slash root in this case, slash bin. So if I create a bin directory in my home directory and then put stuff in there, that's going to get searched after the rest of the stuff that's already in path. So this is how you would customize it for a single user. This is useful if you've got like certain um, like programming tools or things that you want to be you know, found for your user, but not necessarily by other users. You put it in that user's bash underscore profile. That's a hidden file in each user's home directory. Where this original path is actually coming from, though, is going to be either etc profile, which is a file. And you can see that there's some munging that's done with path. Some stuff is added. And then finally, finally, it's exported along with a bunch of other stuff. So bash starts. We'll evaluate this and then export this stuff. So this is where path originally gets set. There's also etc profile D, and there are several scripts in here. Each of these can also uh, change some of the variables that are set when bash starts. The thing I really want you to remember from here is basically if you've got the task to change some kind of like path thing for a single user, do it in that user's home directory. So that would be, you know, home in my case, let's say Dave and then bash profile. There's no Dave user on the system yet, but that's where it would be. If you want to do the same thing for root, it's the same. So it would be slash root dot bash profile. And finally, if you wanted to do it for all regular users except for root, what you might do is do it in etc profile here. And you can see just before this export path, I would put a comment, you know, with your name and the date, because you're working with other people, so it's a good habit to get into. And that's where you then can say, okay, fine, path equals dollar sign path, colon, and then whatever you want to append. That's it for path. Um, it's important. It's getting looked up and set and munged and changed all the time every time you start up bash or move around, do things. And that should give you enough information to at least be comfortable with what it is, how it works, and how to modify it, and when that might be useful. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks.